any sinner is capable of being a great saint. Good morning. Welcome to Pints of the Aquinas. It's very, very early today. I'm having a coffee. Cheers. Usually, most mornings over at mattfrad.locals.com, we do a uh, morning coffee podcast. So I decided to do it over here today. Hope that's okay. So if you're a local supporter, welcome. Cheers. Today, I wanted to discuss why I won't be taking down the set of a cuntism debate that I hosted on my channel about 12 days ago between Casman and Diamond. Ah, it's a bit awkward commenting on this because I don't mean any disrespect to uh, Kassman, who who def- tried to de- tried to defend the position that there have been valid popes since John the twenty third. But I do think the general consensus was that Brother Diamond won the debate in trying to show that there is no valid pope. Um, as I say, that's not meant to be any. That's not meant to be disrespectful. Casman's been on the show before. He's he's handled himself and defended his position very well. I've seen him in other debates. He's a very formidable debater and a very intelligent guy. But uh, yeah, this this was a scandalous debate. You know why? I don't think it was scandalous because of what we were debating. I think it was scandalous because I think the set of a contest wasn't soundly refuted. Um, and I got a lot of people who've been telling me that because it was so scandalous, I should take down the um, the debate. Like, here's one. Let's see if I can find. Here's one comment. When I saw the thumbnail for Frad's debate in my recommended feed, I thought I was having a stroke. It was a very entertaining debate overall, but I definitely agree that it was a scandalous it was scandalous and nothing of value be, would be lost if it got deleted from the Pints with Aquinas. <laughs> and then Scholastic Answers, uh, who, by the way, did, a, I think, a very good response to Diamond on his channel, um, agrees with that assessment, it seems, and, and, and others have said the same thing. Uh, I've had some people say, why would you debate these topics uh, that could cause scandal. Well, what debates would you have me host? Uh, like, what debate is worth having that wouldn't have the possibility of causing scandal? Should there be altar girls? <laughs> it sounds pretty scandalous. I've hosted debates on atheism. That could have been really scandalous. I've hosted debates on abortion. I had an abortionist on my channel. An actual, I don't know if he was still performing abortions when he was on my show, but Stephanie Gray Connors soundly refuted his position and no one was telling me to take down that debate. I think the reason people are t- telling me to take this debate down is because they believe that the set of a contest won. And I would agree with that. I would agree with that assessment, but I'm not going to take it down. Why? Well, um, I'm not going to I'm not going to get in the habit of taking down debates when my guy didn't win. And I don't think you should want that either. Uh, imagine, imagine do, first of all, imagine, imagine doing something like that and then saying to somebody else in the future, like, for example, I, I'm going to be hosting a live debate here at our cigar lounge, Chesterton's, between Gavin Ortland and Trent Horn. How would Gavin feel coming in thinking, well, looking forward to this debate. If I win, Frad will take the debate down, but eh, it's all right. I'm not going to do it. Um, Interestingly enough, I think the same people who are saying these sorts of things are also the same sorts of people who bang on the free speech drum. But I will say that one good thing that's come out of this debate is that there's been some excellent responses to this, and I think a renewed discussion about the SSPX as well. I'm going to put three links, three or four links below, so that you can check out a review of this debate, especially if it caused you uh, any uh, consternation or grief or doubt. Trent Horn just released a response to Diamond's arguments. And so I'm going to put that below. That would be the top one that I would recommend. Other ones I would recommend are by Reason and Theology, The Logos Project. That involved 
two X set of occultists refuting Diamond, as well as the one I mentioned earlier, uh, Scholastic Answers. So even though I regret hosting the debate because I think, as I already said, the set of occultists wasn't soundly refuted, I'm no way, never going to take it down. So if that bothers you, you'll have to get over it. Um, Also, people have asked, like, why are you, why, why would you, why would you call him brother Diamond? Well, I would, I, out of respect, you know, like if a if an Anglican priest came on my show and he said, "Yes, my name is Father Jeff," and I was like, "All right, Jeff," you see how that's disrespectful? Like, just because I don't look to him as a spiritual father. It doesn't mean I'm going to disrespect him by calling him by his first name. And likewise, I was trying to be respectful of this Brother Diamond character, who I hadn't, I know, knew very little of before the debate. So in hindsight, I, I think the debate was worth having. Be- Why? Why is it worth having? Because of the incredible amount of turbulence within and without of the church. It's like, I, and, you know, Catholic historians tell me that this has been the case. And maybe it seems obvious to you that this has been the case for the last 2,000 years, that Holy Mother Church is always attacked from within and from without. And we have to be really careful as Catholics who want to be faithful to Jesus Christ, not to align ourselves with those who dissent from the authority of the church. Because it's easy to look at like crazy German bishops and heretical priests pushing like sodomy and who clearly don't seem to have any living faith and to be so appalled by that that we run and we join forces with those who are attacking the authority of the church but they've got a really really nice tridentine liturgy so yeah i just want to encourage you to go check out trent's response today as well as the other links all right. Uh, okay, well, let's see any... I guess I should take some questions here. I can't believe there are 347 of you and it's 9.13 in the morning. Come on. What are you doing? What time zone are we talking here? Gamble with your souls. Good luck. Okay, cheers, John. Thank you, Matt. The Pines of the Qantas podcast have been invaluable to my catechesis. I got a text from Laura Horn, who has a who's a very good, funny woman who has her own YouTube channel. That's Trent's wife, who I've mentioned on the show before, and um, she pointed. She actually went to a I don't know some some gathering, and someone said that they came into the church because of the debates specifically that we hosted here. So that was that was very good to hear. Michael Schmidt says, "Honest debate is." Why don't I put him up here for you? Ugh, it's very large, isn't it? It's so necessary in our culture. Struggles with the concept of agreeing, disagreeing with dignity. I think that's right. Redemption's reach says losing a debate doesn't make you wrong, necessarily. I mean, you might be wrong, but it doesn't mean you are. It just means we need to understand our argument better. Oh, I'm... I'm really surprised that many of you are saying you're glad that I'm making this statement. I was expecting everyone to be pissed off. It's very easy to piss people off on YouTube, it turns out. I think that Kassam wasn't that bad. Yeah, and I certainly am not saying that he was bad. I'm just saying that the general consensus was that Diamond won. <laughs> what else we got here? Kim, what else we got here? Yeah, here's a good question from Rachel. Rachel A, you from Canada, Rachel. I'm curious, how do you maintain your position on an issue when your position is not adequate? Well, let me give you an example of when I don't think my position was adequately won or debated. So here's another example. I had, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying, see, this is one of the difficult things. Commenting on debates on my channel is a very difficult thing to do. And I, I'm, I was, honestly, I was reluctant to record this video because I don't want to 
have people on my channel to debate and then comment on that debate. So I've done this once before. I had a debate between Dr. William Lane Craig and Jimmy Aiken discussing the Kalam cosmological argument. And right after that, if you remember, I did a review of the debate on my channel with Jimmy. And after that, I realized I shouldn't have done that. That's not fair to have two people come on my show and then get one of them back on to sort of basically have another hour long opening or closing statement as to why he's right. I should not have done that. I think it's okay if other people want to do that. And I think it's okay if I comment on it generally. So if I host a debate on atheism, obviously I have other videos on atheism that respond to atheistic arguments, but I'm never again in the future going to host a debate. Let's say Trent and this other fella, Gavin Ortland, terrific Protestant guy. I would, I would never host that debate and then have Trent back on to discuss that debate. That's just not fair to the debaters. Why am I bringing that up? Oh, yeah. So there was a debate between, oh, golly, the name's escaping me. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Trent. No, not Trent. We just mentioned Trent. I had Father Gregory Pine debated. Oh, there he is. Um, Joe Schmidt from Majesty of Reason. Okay. And they were debating whether the Thomistic understanding of divine simplicity is true. I hope that Gregory, Father Gregory doesn't mind me saying, again, this is what makes this awkward, that Schmidt won that debate. That was, that was awkward for me, you know? So what do I do? Well, I think about it more and I talk to other people about it more. That sort of thing, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, how I, that's how I deal with it. Um, yeah, all right, good. Look, peace out. Go check out Trent's video. Please share it far and wide to atone for my sins. And uh, yeah, God bless. Um, look, hey, if you want, go join us over at Locals, mattfrad.locals.com. I'm also over on Rumble because I don't trust that YouTube's going to allow me to keep posting indefinitely. I'm pretty sure there will come a time where I'm banned for transgressing secular dogma. So if you go over to mattfrad.locals.com, follow us over there. Follow us on Rumble. I'd really appreciate that as well. Tomorrow, I'm hosting an interview with um, George Farmer, who's the CEO of Parler. And we're going to be discussing a whole host of things. We're actually going to be recording the interview in our new cigar lounge. So that should be fun, hopefully. Hopefully, it'll go off without a hitch. Um, plans on being a, it'll be a long conversation about all things social media and he's a convert to the Catholic faith. This is, if you've ever heard of Candace Owens, this is her husband. So I don't think she's a Catholic yet, but he is. And so we'll talk about his conversion and stuff like that. So hope you can join us there. Click subscribe, click the bell button. You'll be notified when it goes live. Cheers. Bye.